my tent collapsed this morning. Kind of, I needed to get up anyway, so it wasn't too bad, but that broken pole is just splitting more and more with every pitch. I think it will be okay. It'll last another couple of nights and that's all it has to last, so that's fine. I packed up, I pedaled down into Falsherping, picked up some supplies, and then got straight onto the Westjutland, West, Westjutlanden, Westjutlanden, which is a cycle path that I think is worth talking about. I've ridden on a few like this on this trip, and in many ways, they are the best kind of cycle route. Not because they're the most exciting or the most epic to ride along, but actually for the opposite reason, because they're just so practical. And this one follows an old railway route. It starts in Falsherping and runs south for close to 100 kilometers, I think, through Ulrishamna, and I'm not even sure where it finishes. And it is really well built, really well maintained, really well signposted. It is direct, it's safe, it's traffic free. It's the kind of route that people could use to commute to work. It's the kind of route kids could use to get to school. It's the kind of route people would use to go and visit friends or go to the shops in the next town. The point is, it's not built as a pleasure loop for existing cyclists. It's a practical link between two places. It's the kind of thing which will plant the seed of the idea of cycling in the heads of people who might not already be cyclists. You know, it's the kind of thing which will make someone who normally drives to work think about perhaps cycling to work a couple of times a week instead. I don't know what the cost per mile is of building something like this, especially if you don't have um, an existing route like an old railway, but I guarantee it's not going to be as expensive or as controversial or as difficult as building a road. And if you stack up that cost against hospital wards full of people having heart attacks or suffering from obesity, or these other casualties of this modern, sedentary lifestyle that we all live, though we all know it's bad. It seems like a no-brainer to me. I mean, I'm biased because I just love all things cycling. It seems to me, if you build this fairly simple piece of infrastructure and you position it well, then you encourage people out of their cars, you encourage people to take some exercise, you link places that weren't linked before. You put routes like this between remote villages. You link them to train stations, to park and rides, to out of town shops. You bring everything together in a way that encourages people to get outside and do something physical. And we know, we all know this is really good. We, they, you know, there's good science to say that going out for a bike ride is good for you, not just physically, but mentally. It makes the world a better place if people do this. And it seems very much like a build it and they will come scenario. You build a route like this and people will start to use it to get from A to B. Then they will discover that they love cycling or just that cycling is a practical way of getting around. And they will do it more and you'll build more routes. And it rolls and it rolls and it gets bigger and bigger. And in the perfect world, after the revolution, when I'm in charge, there'll be routes like this all over the place. You won't be able to move for them. You know, it's, it's just the way it should be. I'm gonna stop rambling.
can probably guess wasn't one of my more meticulously planned videos. I didn't really mean to do any filming. I was just cycling along, I was mulling about cycle paths and I thought in the true spirit of social media I'd just splurge it all out on camera, see if I could fix it in the edit. Whether I achieved that or not, I don't know. You'll have to be the judge of that. But it was something I, it seemed important at the time. Anyway, done another 100 kilometers today. Really lovely ride from Fellsherping down through Ulrichsamna and onwards. It's just all this lovely smooth cycle path, which started the whole ramble in the first place. I think at this rate, I'll probably hit Halmstad tomorrow evening. If it stays like this and the weather stays good. But for now, this is me done. I'm going to pitch up here. I've got a little picnic table and stuff so I can cook my dinner on. There's a sign over there that says Sandurdla, which means sand lizards. So there might be some lizards, which would be cool. Um, oh, something else cool that happened. I was cycling along. And I passed a little picnic spot with a fire pit just on the side of the cycle path. And I had that moment of, I've been here before. And it was so strong, I stopped and I checked my location history in Google. And I have been there before. I cycled that, just that little four or five kilometer section of path, I cycled the other way when I did my Gothenburg to Kalmar ride two years ago. Um, I knew I'd cross that path at some point I had to but I didn't expect to recognize anything as mundane as a fire pit but um, that was interesting and it got me sort of thinking about that trip two years ago similar time of year similar part of the world this time I've definitely seen more other cyclists more cycle tourists more people loaded up and going somewhere and I mean that's just an observation it's not statistically significant but Maybe it lends a little bit of weight to my whole argument. Maybe as cycle infrastructure improves, which it is doing in this part of the world, maybe more people are discovering cycling and discovering a passion for it and getting out on adventures. It'd be nice to think so, but who knows? Only time will tell. Oh yeah, I found a slow worm as well, so that was cool.